Activity 4, Lecture, Difficulties in the New Settlement. Over 400 years ago, 105 men set sail for a strange new land. These men were not conquerors or warriors or great explorers. They were councilmen, gentlemen, and tradesmen. They were men in search of gold and treasure to take back to their king. In December 1606, the men left England, arriving in the New World in May 1607. At first sight, the land looked like paradise. The trees were lush and full, the wild berries unknown to the new arrivals grew everywhere. Many of the men, who enjoyed comfortable lives in England, thought that coming to America would be a nice experience. Historical evidence of the time indicates that the gentlemen enjoyed taking care of their personal grooming. Many of these men knew nothing about hard physical work. They lacked the skills necessary to work the land, build shelters, and gather food. Fortunately, a leader was among these men, John Smith. A hard worker, Smith rounded up the men to explore the surrounding land and hunt for food. Smith, who was 27 at the time, documented the settlers' experience in Jamestown, painting a dark picture of a life full of hard times, sickness, and disease. He considered some of his fellow travelers lazy and incapable. On May 21, 1607, Smith and six other leaders set out to explore the James River. Seeing that the settlers were leaderless, the Native Americans planned their first attack on the settlers on May 26, 1607. About 200 Indians attacked the unprepared settlers, injuring 11 and killing one. When Smith returned, he immediately led the survivors in the building of a fort for protection. This is the first structure of the first English settlement in America. Smith took it upon himself to meet and attempt to build relations with the Native Americans. When he met Powhatan, a powerful Indian leader, Smith told a story of betrayal, indicating that the Indians tried to kill him by bashing in his head. Smith claims he would have been killed had it not been for Powhatan's favorite daughter, Pocahontas, who threw herself onto Smith, saving his life. Historians believe that Smith liked to tell stories, and that this never happened. They believe that the tribe punished their enemies through torture, and that killing Smith so quickly was not typical for them. In addition, Pocahontas would have only been twelve at the time, and likely would not have risked her life for a stranger. In the end, Smith struck a deal with the tribe. The Indians would supply the settlers with corn in exchange for European goods. When Smith arrived back at the fort with the good news that he had formed an alliance with the Native Americans, he was surprised to find that nearly half of his group had died from disease and starvation. He was blamed for what had happened at the settlement because he was the leader. Just when the settlers thought that all hope was lost, a new boat full of settlers arrived. Two women, the colony's first, were among the new arrivals. Even though there were conflicts with the Native Americans, the greatest tensions may have existed among the settlers. Many of the gentlemen resented Smith because he made them work. It was not fair that 40 or 50 men worked hard so that 150 wealthy gentlemen could enjoy a life of leisure. For the first year and a half, the settlers had to rely on the dirty wa river water for drinking, and many of them died from disease. In the second year, Smith was seriously wounded from a gunpowder explosion and returned to England. The settlers began to expand their establishment against Powhatan's wishes, and he ordered that any Englishman who stepped outside the fort be killed. The alliance ended. That year, the settlers faced their harshest winter yet. The Indians no longer supplied the settlers with food, and leaving the fort was suicide. This period is known as the Starving Time. Trapped and running out of food, the settlers were forced to eat anything and everything they could find. From Europe, additional boats were sent with 400 more settlers. The intent was to provide the settlers with additional support, but the settlers feared that the extra 400 mouths to feed would only make life in Jamestown more difficult. After three years of struggling, another ship arrived at Jamestown in May 1610. The new men found a terrible scene. They packed up the remaining survivors with the intent to leave. The settlers abandoned Jamestown, but before they could get far away, three more ships arrived on June 8, 1610, full of food and hope. For the first time since John Smith left, a new and capable leader by the name of Lord Delaware arrived. Unlike Smith, Delaware, a relative of the Queen, had the influence to get the men in line. With new supplies and a new leader, Jamestown began to thrive. In just a few years, it boomed to over 100 settlers. 1,000 settlers.